Well, hello and welcome to Unleashed. I'm Carl Metzler, and this week we're taking a deep dive into the scent capabilities of man's best friend. Now, it's no secret that a dog has one of the keenest sense of smell in the animal kingdom, but is it sharp enough to detect a virus? Well, Jeff Mender at Top Tier Canine is training dogs to detect the COVID-19 virus, and he's here to share his story this week on Unleashed. There are over 86 million dogs in the United States, but only a select few are considered elite working or sporting dogs. From police and military canines to hunting and sporting dogs and everything in between, meet the dogs your dog aspires to be. Get ready to see man's best friend in a whole new light. This is Unleashed. I'm Jeff Mender. I'm the CEO of Top Tier Canine, and we're in Madison, Florida. I also have offices in Tallahassee, Florida, and Valdosta, Georgia. Now, Top Tier Canine was established in uh, 2014 uh, with primary goal of, of teaching people how to train dogs. And in that process, we've come up with a, a thing called Foundation Dogs, which is a way that we take young puppies as young as six weeks old and put them through a training process that involves four phases. They train the dog on 50 elements and four functions uh, that then we can shell these things called foundation dogs and then finish them as police canine, military canine, COVID-19 uh, detection dogs, service dogs for people with disabilities and family or executive protection dogs. Prior to being in the dog world, uh, I was a project manager at a software development company um, and I um, spent a lot of time teaching other organizations from Lockheed Martin and Motorola, Knowles Atomic Power Lab. I would teach their engineers how to manage projects. Oh, and, and then with a degree in computer science and a minor in math, my whole life was about numbers and process and quality assurance and you know things like Six Sigma. Well, when I got in the dog industry, there was nothing or is nothing except for what we do that, that comes close to that. So what I, what I did was with uh, in training dogs is I wanted to develop a process whereby I could train multiple dogs through a series of, of elements and functions that gave all of my dogs a common denominator that would be able to be exploited regardless of what the dog deployed to do. So our foundation dog program and the way it's designed, it's a four phased approach to training dogs to then be finished later as that police canine, military canine, service dog, protection dog, or now our virus detection dog program. We start the puppies off at six weeks old. The first phase is, is phase one. Uh, there's several elements we train the dog on from basic obedience, luring, uh, hand kisses, send outs, uh, learning to, to bite and to, and to rebite and to have a, a full, calm, deep you know, bite. Uh, from tracking and then finding specific odor and introducing the dogs to a game of odor detection. That's a three week cycle. Those that pass that phase move on to phase two, which really just exploits more of the dog's basic drives, hunt drive, prey drive, uh, survival drive or defense drive, and, and brings that out more, right? To test the dog and to test the dog with more pressure, with more conflicts, they learn to manage their load, so they become a better tracker, a better bite dog, a better scent dog, and then maybe moving to off-leash obedience. And then into phase three, which exploits it even further and, and gets the hunt going with the dog to search for odor, gets the tracking to the level that the dogs are tracking, say at a Schutz and one or, or um, IPO one at that time, uh, or even higher levels of tracking. And, and maybe now they're targeting on the bicep or on the leg for bite work. So each phase of the development increases the challenges for the dog. And then dogs either complete that through the, through the end of phase three and become certified foundation dogs or they fall off somewhere in the process. And then we may uh, uh, move those dogs as an emotional support dog, a therapy dog, or, or what we call pets plus. And they might go into a house to, to just be an advanced pet, you know, with great obedience. But we, so our foundation dog program works these puppies from six weeks old to about a total of a year old by the time they're mature enough to then be finished as that police canine or, or military canine, or again, the biggest, uh, demand that we're getting now are the COVID-19 detection dogs, which are just part of our virus detection 
program. So foundation dogs can now be finished as virus detection dogs. So not just for COVID-19, but for the next pandemic. For your active dog, not just any dog food will do. It takes special care and nutrition to support their energy to work and play. That's why we made Kinetic Performance Dog Food. Each Kinetic formula is made with three animal proteins and no fillers like corn, wheat, or soy. This lets you feed less and still get more energy, faster recovery, and better weight maintenance. If health and performance matter to you, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs, but you'll love it for yours. When it comes to elite canine and handler training, the best of the best turn to one place, Von Lick Kennels. Von Lick is the premier full-service canine training center and detection service provider in the world. Their world-renowned training methods and experienced training staff produce the best canine and handler training available anywhere. When only the best will do, join over 5,000 law enforcement, government, and civilian agencies who count on Von Lick Kennels. The dog's nose, and the reason it's so powerful, is in the wild, and even domestically, the dogs still need their nose to survive. We're finding dogs never get nose blind, they get sharper, their noses get stronger, because a dog has the innate desire to hunt. But it's that hunt drive, and developing the hunt drive, which you'll see in the Labrador Retrievers, you know, you'll see it in our Malinois, our German Shepherds that we use, you can, ne it never stops. You can, if you do it right, you can constantly improve that hunt drive. There's no, there's no cap to it. The dog's nose is, is fascinating. We still don't know everything about it, right? But we just took a major step in proving that it's thousands of times stronger than anybody ever thought before. So their olfactory system or olfactory system has millions of more receptors than ours do. So when, when odor comes in, it's filtered and basketed and sent to the brain in a direct path. So the odor and, and, and the recognition of odor and the use of odor as part of their survival is still key to their survival. Yes, a dog can find any odor and yes, Everything has a unique odor, everything. Well, the story of COVID-19 and COVID-19 detection, uh, one of my uh, instructors that worked for my school was a fellow named Dwayne Pickle. Uh, Dwayne was the very first uh, dog trainer to train a dog to find cancer cells on a human being. Back in the 80s and 90s, he did this. I said, Dwayne, I said, you know, I've got some amazing nose dogs. I mean, these guys are really strong in odor. They need a job. What do you think about me and you working together to get a dog to uh, find and indicate on a virus? And he said, let's do it. He didn't even hesitate. If you think about the size of a virus, it's, it's a light wave is four times larger than a virus. If you go scuba diving or you go in a submarine uh, out and you go about a hundred or about a thousand meters down, you're gonna run out of light, right? You get so deep in the ocean, it's just pitch black. You would then have to go four times that depth, right? Cause that's where a light wave is, right? That's the size of a light wave. So 4,000 meters down is where that virus exists, but there's no light from 1,000 to 4,000. So what else do you have these special octopuses and these, you know, these fish that have never been seen before. So the deeper you go, you're gonna be exposed to things you don't know is there. So how do I get a dog to sniff past all that and know he's on the virus? Well, the key is not just having the standalone virus that's isolated, but anything above that. So, so let's say the virus is 4,000 feet or meters deep. So let's say there's something at 3,000 meters deep. Well, I put it in the virus, then I replicated it in the non-virus. So then the blind tubes that the dog would discern not to indicate on had everything except the virus itself. We led the way on that. Top Tier Canine was the first group in the world, in the governments and universities, to get a dog to hunt for and indicate on a virus, not just take the virus and spin it in front of the dog and see if they could recognize it, but actually desire to hunt right for that virus. We were the first to do it. Since then, 
Dubai is doing it. They now have COVID-19 dogs in the airport. Germany's doing it. Uh, Finland, Helsinki just came out with a report, their studies, they just proved, and they came out with a report that a doll, this is so important, and it explains this depth of finding the virus. A dog needs 10 molecules of the COVID-19 virus, which buddy, that's like a virus within the virus within the virus. So now instead of 4,000 meters deep, it's like 8,000 meters deep. It only needs 10 molecules of the virus to discern that virus from every other odor around it. The technical tests, your laboratories need 18 million molecules for technology to find it. And that's, that's documented. So we did it, but we didn't have the money to do that depth of, of validation. And thank God that, that Finland did it, Germany did it, Dubai did it because it validated the work that we've, we've proven. So a dog only needs 10 molecules of COVID to know it's COVID. Can you imagine if, if we had these dogs available in January and, and then we could have these dogs two weeks later at the airports, at the seaports, in the hospitals, in the nursing homes, indicating on people who have the virus and isolating them away, we would have stopped the pandemic. It wouldn't be a pandemic. And it just tells you we haven't even tapped even closely yet into the capabilities of these dogs. I need you to get me out of the country, out of here, away. All in exchange for a sip of coffee? Yeah. It's Black Rifle Coffee. Let's try some. Why don't you head over to blackriflecoffee.com and get yourself set up with a Coffee Club subscription. Feel like the season just got started? Well, there's no reason to stop hunting now. At Highland Hunting, you can enjoy a great upland experience through the end of March. Located in Southeast Iowa, we have over 1,200 acres of diverse upland habitat with the best flying and wildest birds you'll find at any upland outfitter. Our incredible staff and great accommodations let us show you a true Iowa upland experience at Highland Hunting. Give us a call and schedule your next adventure today. You know, for centuries we've lived and worked beside dogs, and as time's passed, we've uncovered more and more of what these animals are capable of. We use them to detect explosives and narcotics and currency and bed bugs and game birds, all kinds of things to keep us safer or improve our lives. Now, a dog's nose is an incredible thing, and even now, we're uncovering new ways to make use of their abilities. The virus is the smallest any dog has ever indicated on. Right, if you figure a, a human cell as a basketball and the virus is a BB. Uh, so the COVID's been an amazing thing. We developed our own test kits. So when we train and sell a COVID a detection dog, it's actually a, 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 a virus platform, right? Because we teach it a game, then the test kits that we give for, for employees or prisoners in jail or, or, or people that live in a nursing home, they swab their mouth and they put it in a test kit the dog is trained on that test kit. Not only on COVID, but on test kit. They see the test kit, hunt drive comes up, they go after it and they, they can, they'll indicate on where the COVID is. We can do six people per minute per dog that we can test with, with roughly 96% accuracy. So then we just made that a virus detection dog because in the next pandemic, in two weeks, I can add the virus, the new virus. Once I get it, I can add it to our foundation dog scent portfolio in two weeks which means if somebody bought a COVID-19 dog today and a year from now, COVID-20 or, or some other virus, some influ influenza virus or polio type of virus comes out, as soon as I have it, two weeks later, those existing dogs are now searching for and, and indicating on that new virus created a new pandemic, right? And so and that's where we are. And now we not only have a bunch of foundation dogs ready to deploy as COVID-19 detection dogs, we we'll file patents uh, uh, to get the test kits that, that support the dog's work. We have buyers coming from all over the, the world, actually with different uses of these dogs. We have a school that trains people how to train the dogs, right? And actually, I, we train people how to train COVID-19 dogs. We give away to other dog trainers, right? Because we want to help more dogs and help more owners. I know that's a long you know, process, but guys, this was the most exciting thing I've done in my life. 
and, and having those dogs beside me rise to the challenge and, and successfully do something, but now we're bringing something back to the dog industry that will benefit all of the dog trainers who want to get involved in, in the future of, of this level of scent detection, which again has never been done ever in, in the history of the world. Dogs have never been used to find something this tiny. Every dog that we have in our training that we deal with, whether it's pets, whether it's the foundation dogs or the finishing programs, the amount of time it takes to train the dog or how many hours that are in that dog vary tremendously, right? So there may be 500 hours in one dog to get it to a level of nine, and there may be 1,200 hours in another dog to get it to a level of nine, right? So every dog's different, so we focus on scope. Right, so we set requirements on what we want the dog to perform, then it takes what it takes. But at a minimum, we'll have 500 hours uh, in a foundation dog, that's a minimum. Drive and drive development um, is probably one of the most contentious elements of, of dog training, like recognizing a dog with high prey drive or high defense drive or high hunt drive. I've seen people talk about 30, 40, 50 labels that are drives within a dog. There's truly only a few basic drives in a dog, right? The dogs in nature, right? They, they, need to, they need to find food, they need to chase the food, they need to kill the food, right? And that's, and then they need to have sex. But you're looking at that, that hunt drive or that need to find my own food, the prey drive that kicks in once they see what they're smelling, then the drive that actually allows them to kill that animal without fear of the animal killing them, right? Or that survival drive. The hunt drive, of course, is, is to me is one of the most important because that hunt drive leads to everything else, right? Whether it's using their nose, using their ears, or using their eyes, they're doing all of those things because of their desire to hunt and, and seek out their own prey, right? So to me, the hunt drive is the most important. The COVID dogs being created, the, the greatest scent dogs on the planet today are trained using food drive. That's still the same thing, right? Food drive, they're using their nose, they're using their eyes, they're using their ears to hear a marker, right? But it's still hunt drive. So it's really recognizing drives, dropping what you think you might know about training and opening yourself up to exploiting a dog's drive to accomplish that need that you have for the dog. No matter what you feed, sometimes your dog needs a little help to keep them at the top of their game. For some dogs, it can even mean the chance to just live a normal, healthy life. Our kinetic supplements are formulated to meet specific needs to get and keep your dog at optimal health and performance. Your dog will love them and you'll be amazed at the difference they make. If your dog needs an extra boost, give Kinetic a try. We build it for our dogs and you'll love it for yours. So I know you feel protected in the suit. Don't make any sudden movements without me there giving specific instructions. You got That's it? Fine. Dogs love it. <laughs> I heard that you just bought insurance online. You really should work with somebody like Tom who has the experience and knows what he's doing. Oh, really? Safari Insurance is an independent agency. They represent companies like Auto Owners Insurance. They guide you by showing you all the coverages to keep you safe. Then you decide what fits you best. They guide, you decide. Well, detecting a virus is certainly one way a dog can help protect human health, but it's not the only way. Service dogs, for example, have been around for a long time and they're instrumental in improving the lives and security of the people they serve. One of the biggest opportunities that we have um, is creating service dogs uh, for folks because there's, a, there's an instant return on that. Uh, I've seen dogs turn humans around from serious problems in minutes, minutes. Service dogs are dogs that perform a medically necessary service, or if someone has a medical condition, the dog performs a service that helps the person with the medical condition. It's not a therapy dog, it's not an emotional support dog. The medical service can't be just psychological, oh, I feel better with my dog, it gives me emotional support. That's not what a service dog is. A service dog actually performs a task that helps alleviate 
a medical challenge or a medical emergency. Uh, so yes, yeah, so your service dog performs a medical task, but it can also be a protection dog. It can also be a dock diving dog. It can be a police canine. It can do all kinds of things, but to call it a service dog, it just has to perform one task that's medically needed by the, the handler of the dog. Uh, my name is Brian Minder. I'm, uh, I've been with Top Tier K9 since it started. Uh, live here in Florida. Uh, former uh, Army combat engineer. Really uh, grew a lot with my experience here in Top Tier K9 with service dogs at Protect. My accident was uh, Memorial Day three years ago. Uh, I was grilling out, had the girlfriend, all the kids over, five kids. I just finished throwing all five of them in the pool and I dove in after one and I bounced my head off the, the bottom of the pool. Uh, woke up in the hospital about two, three months later. Uh, completely quadriplegic. Oh, well, I, I got my dog Sapper back in 2014. He was mainly a protection dog, tracking dog, uh, drug detection dog. Um, and then I had my accident and now he's become a service dog that also protects. There's a bunch of different things that he does, does for me now uh, that are far more important than what they used to mean to me. Um, obviously, I'm in a very vulnerable position, especially if I'm gonna be alone or out in public or in a crowd. Um, having Sapper by my side let, assures me that whatever happens, can be taken care of, um, be that a uh, threat, be that you drop my medication, I'm gonna drop my phone. Originally I got Sapper, believe it or not, just as a, intended to just be a, a training uh, experience for me, uh, as opposed to having a lifelong, you know, partner. Um, I really hit, our bonds really gotten stronger since my accident, obviously. Uh, we're, we're around each other 24 seven. Um, gives me safety and security, like emotional security. Uh, honestly, if I didn't have Sapper, I don't know if I'd be as well off as I am now. The power of the dog is just the presence of the dog reduces blood pressure. It, it, the dog will heal you, reduces stress, you know, reduces anxiety. It isn't as much a psychological bond as the depth of that dog's ability to smell chemically what's going on, what's a change, some differentiator from what's normal to what's abnormal, right? And that's what led us then into using the nose more and focusing more on the nose and far less on the teeth. I want nose first. I want, I want hearing second. Their hearing's 100 times better than ours. Their eyesight's 10 times better than ours nose millions of times better than ours. So I want nose, I want ears, and I want eyes, then I want bite, right? That, and that's what, that's what a dog brings to the table. So even a good apprehension dog, I'm thinking, okay, there's chemicals, right? So you're coming into me and you're gonna rob me. Well, I don't need to wait, to, the dog doesn't need to wait till it sees the gun come out. There's something about you that dog recognizes before you ever pull that gun out. I want to exploit that. I want my dog to scare you away before you pull the gun out, not after you pull it out. So what we're learning more and more on is that dog's nose is the most important part of the dog. So we've sharpened the nose through our foundation dog program, right? So we're testing to the nose, right? And then we're, we're working the bite, but it's the fourth most important thing on the dogs we create. And our bite dogs are as good as anybody's. Yeah, but our nose dogs are pretty amazing. <laughs> You know, it never ceases to amaze me the incredible things these dogs are capable of doing to make our lives better, safer, and more enjoyable. And that is what Unleashed is all about. The work that Top Tier Canine and others around the world are doing continue to expand on the impact that dogs have on our world. And we've only scratched the surface. But unfortunately, that's all the time we've got left this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next time on Unleashed.